Real Plumber tries awful plumbing hacks. Have you heard about Five Minute Crafts? They've got videos that actually have millions of views and they do plumbing hacks. Now, nothing against them, but a video channel called Five Minute Crafts talking about plumbing. I've been plumbing for a long time. It's not a craft, it's a work of art, it's science, it's perfection. But what I like is they've got some videos with 22 million views. This channel's great. They've got 62 and a half million subscribers and they've got some cool stuff on there. We're gonna take their channel, we're gonna take their plumbing hacks and we're actually gonna try them today. So I've actually got them here on video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the video and then we're gonna go try the hack. So I want y'all to check this out. Plumbing hacks, they're good sometimes. Tips and tricks, they're great sometimes. Sometimes, maybe not. I haven't looked at these yet. My guys set them up and say, Roger, look, just watch it. Tell us what you think while you're watching it. So that's what I'm fixing to do. But then as soon as we're done, we're gonna go back here and try these. Okay, so they're definitely stopping up the toilet. Love the green water since I own Texas Green Plumbing. Saran wrap. Now see, that would be good for a joke. Y'all think about this in the middle of the night, put saran wrap on the toilet just like that, put the seat down, let somebody go sit on it and take a dump. That's gonna be funny. So here's what they did. Don't get me wrong, this could possibly work and I'm gonna tell you why. So what they did, they take the saran wrap, cellophane, whatever it is, cover the toilet, seal it off really good and push down on it. Plumbers are smart. We have a tool that does that, it's called a plunger. Actually, a lot of people have these at home. And the good thing about it is the plunger is normally sitting right next to the toilet. You don't have to go to the kitchen, pull out saran wrap, and then when your kids say, gee, what are you doing? Well, I'm unstopping the toilet, and they want to see how you're doing it. Now you have a crowd and an audience in the bathroom. Guys, we'll do this, but I'm telling you what, I'm going to show you how to do it with a plunger. Matter of fact, I've already done that. I've got videos where I show you how to use a plunger. That can save you a lot of money, and you don't have to buy tons of saran wrap. Right, so we're going to start off by, of course, stopping up the toilet. Now, me being a plumber, normally when I get called out for a toilet, it's already stopped up. This is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna add a little water to it. I'm not gonna flush it. I just wanna make sure that I got enough in there to get the water level up a little bit. Now let's see what happens. And it's really clogged up. So what I'm gonna do is take an old plunger, and you can see this is an old one, and I'm gonna show you how a plumber did it. That took me 20, 30 seconds. Probably spent five minutes with the saran wrap, trying to wrap it up and get it to work. Guys, I'll take my plunger over any kind of cellophane cling wrap any time of day. Okay, so using Coca-Cola to clean the toilet. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I like this idea, and I'll tell you why. Coca-Cola is very acidic. You can use it to clean your car batteries. You can actually use it to remove teeth. You know, put them in a glass of Coke, wait a month, they'll disappear. Uh, it is that strong. So to use it to clean a toilet, that could be a possibility. I think they make cleaning products specifically for cleaning a toilet. You might try those too. They may actually smell better. So guys, now we're going to try Coca-Cola. This is the men's room here at the plumbing company. And as you can probably see, I didn't come in here and clean this toilet first because I wanted to do this with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the Coke in it. I'm going to leave it in there and we're going to give it 10 minutes and then come back and look at it and see what it does. So I'm going to open this up and hopefully they didn't shake it up on me. Good. And I'm gonna do just like they did. I'm gonna pour the Coke in here all the way around it. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'm gonna give it 10 minutes. We're gonna come back and we're gonna see what it does. All 
Okay, so guys, it's been about 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do, just like they did, I'm just gonna flush it and see what happens. I don't know if you see the same thing I see, but I see fecal remnants on the inside of the toilet. So my thought is, why not just use that spray cleanser that really cleans this stuff up pretty good? Some of them even have like scrubbing bubbles. So I'm gonna call this one a, uh, maybe not so good. Anytime you see fecal remnants around, it's not a good thing anywhere. Let's try the next one. All right, guys, straight up. This one works. And, and this is funny because what this does, think about that. If that's a, a two liter bottle of water, I'm not going to say it's going to save you two liters every time you flush, but if you can put something in there to displace the water, meaning you've got something that's going to take up space that water would normally take up, your toilet's probably still going to flush. If it's, is it going to flush as effectively? Maybe not. 1.28 gallons of water or 1.6 for these low flow toilets, that's a really small amount of water to flush down solids. And you need to move those solids so you don't plug up the sewer line. Now, this is something they started teaching back when we had the 3, 5, 12 gallon flush tanks. Now that we're down to 1.28 and 1.6, they don't use that much water. Could this help? Absolutely. It can help you save water. Could it lead to problems? It's still possible you may not get enough water to flush. So now you may need to flush two or three times or you may end up not having enough water to move the solids. And if it builds up, so you've got a belly, if it builds up there, that may build up and cause you a stoppage. This could actually lead to problems. Now, it will save water. And if you've got one of those old big tanks, this is fantastic. If not, just buy a high efficiency toilet. So as you see, we've taken our bottle, we filled it up with plain tap water. So what we're gonna do is remove the lid and slide this right down in here we also want to make sure it's not going to be in the way of anything. And as you can see, this bottle's too big, so we'll have to end up getting another one. But what I want to show you is when we flush this, the water that would be where the bottle is didn't go down. So what I mean by that is since there's no water there to go down, it saved water, yet it still flushed pretty good. That's why I say, and this is a 1.28 gallon flush toilet. So we may have cut that down a little bit, not much, but maybe even 10%. So if we can save 10% of water every time we flush, that's gonna help save water. I like this idea. We just need to make sure we find a shorter water bottle. As you can see, this bottle sticks up a little bit, but the way this is built, this still fits. So as you can tell by the flush, it actually flushed good and saved water. Like I say, if this can save 10% every time you flush, think about how much that can add up to for you and your family all year long. Okay, clog drain. Now this is, this is something that happens a lot. Okay, so that was a pretty simple one. They just poured baking soda and vinegar down it. Now, I've never tried that. Uh, I've actually, like I said, I've got videos about plungers that kind of do the same thing. If this clog is right there, it's a possibility that the baking soda and vinegar can help clean that up a little bit. And it may make the stoppage or whatever it is clogging it up or maybe just the slow drainage clean out and go through. The hot water pouring right down behind it, that's rinsing down anything that it broke up. To be honest, you can let your lavatory run on hot for a while and that'll help rinse some of that down anyway. So there's a lot of different ways to look at this. I still tell you, go back to the video that I did about a plunger. You can use it on a sink if you use the flat cup plunger, same type deal. Now I will tell you this, that they don't mention. If you have an overflow, you want to make sure that you plug that up because as you're putting pressure in it with a plunger, you don't want that to pull back up. And if there really is a blockage here, this could actually come up there too. So make sure you look at it and think about it and know how your system's built before you try some of this stuff. So as you can see, we got baking soda and vinegar. So what we're going to do is open it up and pour it down this drain. And we're going to get just about as much as we can down there. We're going to move it around a little bit, make sure we get it down into the bottom. And then we're going to take our vinegar and have fun. I'm 
Man, you can hear it, you can see it. It's just bubbling up good. You see it gurgling too, like it's really cleaning stuff up down there. And then we're gonna follow it up with really hot water. I'm gonna move everything around a little bit. This one here looks like it might have worked. The baking soda and vinegar gets down there and creates a chemical reaction and cleans everything really good. The hot water flushes it out and washes it down. Not too bad. I bet I already know what this one is. Cleaning a shower head with vinegar. And guys, this works and I'm gonna tell you why. Vinegar actually breaks up calcium and magnesium, the scale that's left behind by hard water. And that's normally what clogs up a shower head. How do I know this works? This is also a chemical that's used for flushing a tankless water heater. And a lot of plumbers won't tell you that because they may come in with a bottle and just pour it in the bucket, but they make cleansers for flushing a tankless water heater. But if you're a homeowner and you've got the pump and the hoses, using vinegar will do the same thing. So does this work? Absolutely. Now, this is kind of an expensive shower head because it's a handheld. If it's so bad that the vinegar won't clean it up, you can replace a shower head very easy. So guys, as you can see, I have an ugly aerator here. And I mean, I would never clean this. I would replace it, but I'm just curious. I wanna see what it'll do. And then I have an old shower head. Now, this one here, as you see, it's got calcium and magnesium built up around the edge. It's kind of rough. It's old and brittle. The, the little rubber pieces that are, are made for cleaning are actually breaking. So we're gonna go ahead and set this down into the bucket. I'm gonna set the aerator in there just cause I wanna see what it's gonna do. And then, I'm gonna take some vinegar to it. I'm probably going a little more vinegar than I normally would, but I wanna make sure everything's covered really good, soaking in there pretty good. And from where I'm at, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna give it about 10 minutes. We're gonna come back to it, see what it does. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead, pull these out. And wow, I'm gonna tell you, right around the edges of this shower, Head, it already looks pretty daggum good. Looks a lot better than it did. You can see where it only went in up to here, how bad it is above it. I'm gonna plot this aerator too just to see what they look like. You can see how clean and shiny it is around here and how all the water stains up here make it look pretty bad. I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit cleaned up pretty good. Now, here's the part that we talk about. Now, these actually, these rubber self-cleaning heads have actually softened up a little bit. Now, it may just be because they were out in the shop for a while and got dry, but I mean, they'll actually move around. And what these are for, if you've got the little rubber grommet sticking out, what you do is, when you're running the shower, reach up there and rub around it, and it moves that rubber, and that'll let that calcium that may be stuck to it break loose and come out. This actually, I mean, I'm telling you what, as bad as this shower head looked before we started, it actually came out pretty daggum good. Like I said, if you look real close, you can see how pretty and clean the chrome is down here and how you still, still see all the old water stains up here. That's kind of like a before and after right there in one shot. This actually worked pretty good. Now I'm gonna look at the aerator. As you can see, it didn't turn out so well. But remember, I told you before I started, I would not recommend cleaning this one. What I would recommend is a replacement. The only reason I wanted to try to clean this one is because this is a brush nickel finish. This is not just a chrome finish, so I wanted to see what it would look like, and it didn't clean it up very good. But as you can see, this old aerator is nasty. It really needs to be replaced anyway. So guys, this one here, it actually worked for what we intended it for. It didn't work on the one that we knew it needed replacement beforehand. If you've got an old broken down car that's falling apart, washing it up doesn't make it run any better. So anyway, guys, this one here, vinegar, it actually works pretty well. Okay, this is interesting. A syringe, a balloon. Okay, they made a plug for the drain. Okay, that's, I don't know what it is they put in it. I'm going to back this one up just a little bit. So what they did is they basically made a plug for the drain. Took half of the syringe so they could squirt stuff inside there. 
why they need a syringe? Can't you just squirt stuff down in a balloon? We've made water balloons for years. Uh, that, that'll work. Uh, you can also go to the hardware store and buy a drain plug. They make them and, and do the same thing. But would that work? Absolutely. But do you want to just leave a balloon full of something setting up on the counter to stop up your drain with? That's kind of awkward. All right, so I'm going to take my leather one and open up. I've got a tube of DAP. And I'm going to use this instead of a hot glue gun because I'm a plumber. And this is actually what we have available. And I'm not going to use the syringe or anything because I can literally just stick this right down in the balloon or column if that's what you're using and basically squirt and fill it up. What I like about this is it's going to come in, it's going to get hard and full of gel or full of that. And then I'm going to be able to shape it the way that I want it. So this really isn't too bad of a deal. I just want to make sure that I get enough dap down in here to get this good. There we go. I'm going to try and squeeze the air out, squeeze the dap in, and tighten the line. And then, I'm going to stick it right in there. We're going to let it harden up, and then we're going to see how that works. This is actually kind of a neat idea, but i tell you what, I think i just go to the store and buy a stopper. Before I pull this out, I actually want to fill the thing just to see what it'll do. And I'm not going to fill it up all the way. I just wanted to see. It looks good. Now remember, we squeeze the air out so it won't float. I made a pretty neat little stopper. Don't get it wrong. I need to rinse the dap off of it. But you know what? That would work. Now my thought is, if you've got all this around at home and you need a stopper right then and you don't want to go to the store, this might be a great alternative. Make sure you use a green balloon for Texas Green Plumbing. Okay, toothpaste. Okay, now that, I wanna see what this does. I understand the theory behind it. That's actually a pretty cool idea. If you cut that tube of toothpaste and get just enough toothpaste in the water, it could leave it smelling fresh. Problem is, now you're gonna to wanna to brush your teeth in there. I probably wouldn't do that if I were you. Okay, so this one is the way to freshen the water in the toilet probably gonna make it smell a little bit better. And I thought, what would people have around the house that they could use to cut toothpaste that makes it really easy? And I thought about the nail clippers. And literally what I'm gonna do is just come in each end and just cut out just a little bitty section. That way, if you don't have wire cutters, you don't have tin snips, you don't have something like that around, this is something that you can use. Now, I'll squeeze through a little bit so a little bit's coming out. But what I'm gonna do is open this up and literally just pop it right down over in the edge of the tank. There's a little bit of air up where the cap is, which is fine. That's going to make that end float. If you buy the bigger tubes that have the flat end that stand up on your counter, all the air is in the top. So if you cut it in the top, it's actually going to stand up and that end be towards the top. So we'll leave this in here and see what it does. This is one I'm going to have to check back with you later, but I think this is probably a good idea. Okay, there's the flat cup plunger I was telling you about. Okay, now they're using a zip tie. Now they, they, made a, they make a product like this, and, and I do, I like this idea. This is great for sticking down in your drain to pull hair, gunk, and I say the gunk, the gunk's gonna collect with the hair, but watch this. Now, if I was him, I'd have taken that screw out and pulled that great off that drain, but man, this stuff works. That will grab any hair, any buildup in there, and as you can see, I probably get a lot of hair down in there, uh, actually I used to have hair all the way down to my waist. So I can understand that lavatory sinks do get full, do get clogged and that will work. They also make a product that you can get at the box store. Kind of the same, put your finger in the loop on the end and it's got the little barbs on it all the way up and you slide it down in there and pull it out. Guys, you would not believe some of the stuff you'll pull out of a lavatory sink or a lavatory drain. I've actually used the tool that they're trying to emulate. Now, what I did is I started out with stuff you would have around the house, a zip tie and nail clippers. And nail clippers are probably, I wouldn't cut a lot with them, but to cut a zip tie would be fine. And what I'm doing, I am trying not to go even halfway in and I'm sliding up about an inch every time I move. Now, here's the thing, it, it doesn't really pull it out where you get big strong teeth coming. But, 
I think it'll be enough that it will grab hair. Now what I'm gonna do is I cut about every inch coming up one side. Now I'm going up the other side and trying to cut right between them. And you wanna be careful because if you cut in the exact same spot, you're gonna end up cutting it in half. So once you get this done, you wanna create something to keep you from dropping it down the drain. And as you can see, I've got a lot of little cuts in it and you can see that they stick out a little bit. And this may be great in case of an emergency. To be honest, if you want something like this, next time you're at the big box store, go ahead and get one. What you do is here's you make your little handle, so you've got something to hold on to. And I like this because you can slide this in. Now this one's not very long, but you know, they make zip ties two or three feet long. And the more you cut them, you might want to angle them out. That way it kind of pulls those sharp teeth out. And as you see, this is little, so I broke it. But you want to pull it out to where those little teeth, you can feel it because that's what's going to grab the hair. And what you'll do is take it, stick it down in there, slide it out, and hopefully it grabs a wad of hair like it did in their video. Guys, this can be a good tool and it can save you money. Now, I don't know if I'd make it out of this unless I had some big, heavy-duty, beefy zip ties. Like I said, they make a product that looks just like this that you can go buy, and it's probably 3 or $4. If you get this caught down in your drain, you've got to take everything apart. Think of the time that you're going to spend just trying to get it all back out. Real Plumber Tries Awful Plumbing Hacks has been kind of fun. Some of these I think might be a good deal. The Coke in the toilet, we actually went back with a brush and scrubbed it out, and it softened everything up where it cleaned up pretty well. The water bottle in the tank, that's gonna save you money no matter how you look at it. Some plumbing hacks are great. Some of them really put liquid nails or caulk or hot glue in a balloon to make a stopper. Just go buy a stopper. They're not that expensive. And think about it next time you're at the store. I hope you enjoy these videos. Going through these and watching them is kind of fun to see what people think about. Now, if you've got some hacks that you do for your plumbing system, or you've got something that you tried that's even cool, let me know because I'd like to hear about it. So leave us a comment down below. I've got some other videos where we laugh at funny things that have happened in some movies. And guys, I kind of bust them too because some of them are not very real. Anyway, check them out and let me know what you think. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.